Hello, hey everybody. Hello to everybody there in the chat. Hello to all our members there. I can see you all lit up in green. Welcome. I'm Natalie and this is Scientology Life After Occult, where I talk about and recap the news that has the internet buzzing about Scientology. We do a whole recap so that you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours and not getting sleep. I do that for you. <laughs> And lots of people help me. Thank you to everybody who sends me links to natalie at lifeafteroccult.com with timestamps and clips and what you think about it and what, what has you buzzing. It's really interesting to see what I get the most emails on. It's, it's truly been fascinating. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And there is so much to talk about. Welcome and thank you to my mods today. Nancy's here and my Tony is here as well because we are back home. As you can see, I'm back in my normal spot from Chicago. I'm just excited to get back to, uh, you know, there really is just no place like home. <laughs> it is great to be back and I'm super fired up because we have some, very, not just some very interesting things to talk about today, but this week as well including later today. I got a couple of things coming up for you guys that I think you are going to enjoy. And uh, I think I'm going to enjoy sharing it with you, even though one thing we're going to talk about is a little on the difficult side, but I'm going to dedicate a video. I'm going to, today I'm going to do a video later, probably, probably around 12 central time, but I'll get out a notification. And I want to share my story of when I left the C organization, how I got out of there and everything that happened around that. I've gotten a lot of questions about that, and I thought, well, let's just address it and do a video. So look for that this afternoon, probably around 12 p.m. Central Time. In the meantime, we are going to talk about some interesting ties to somebody who spoke at the Chicago Ideal Organization opening, and we are going to go look at the new Aftermath Foundation billboard that came out. There's a lot of thoughts about that, and a lot of videos came in about that. We're going to talk about how Scientology tried to recruit Scientology Audit Streets LA, William Goode. We have a clip of that. I just cannot believe it. That's just like, talk about timing. <laughs> We're going to touch on a little bit of La Poubelle news and update about Danny, a little more Chicago news, and then hit some protests happening around the country because there are lots of them. I'm telling you, but we're getting to the point where I might need to do two updates a day just to keep up with even most of it. It's not even all of it. I A lot of what I share, like I said, is determined by you guys, what people send me. I consume a lot of content, but I really drive what we share based on what has people talking. So thank you again for sending those emails and helping me out in putting this all together. Super thankful for that. So let's kick it off. Let's kick it off with Aaron. Over at Growing Up in Scientology, he shared something so interesting of a, a tie of another SPTV creator and a speaker from the Chicago Ideal Organization. But before we do that, DP Never In, thank you so much for becoming a member. Hip, hip, hooray. Thank you. Truly appreciate that support. All right, let's check out Aaron here. Let's check it out. Oh, I made that stop on a really weird face. Hold. Okay. Let's see. Okay, check this out. The ballot in Chicago for state's attorney, he made a, a Twitter post saying, just doing my job. Guess who was a very close childhood friend of Bob Fioretti? The one and only Clearwater George of the Surrounded by Scientology channel. And um, uh, uh, Clearwater George and I are good buddies. Our daughters uh, go to school together. Uh, Clearwater George and I will, will be doing a bunch of in-studio chats. And um, uh, Clearwater George is going to be talking to his, his old friend, Bob, to try to get Bob to understand that he's really stepped in it and he might want to think about, um, giving some different responses to the criticism about supporting Scientology. And, um, and I, I think, I think it's, um, it, I think it's reasonable to assume that once George is done having whatever conversations he wants to have with Bob that um, that perhaps we'll hear about how those conversations. The ballot. Isn't that cool? It is a great example of you just never know who you know, right? Six, deg six degrees of separation. A lot of the times we can connect to each other. So I'm looking forward to hearing about that. And I bet we could even talk to George surrounded by Scientology and find out, find out 
about uh, that coming conversation. And every ideal organization that opens when they do their press release with all of their propaganda, they include, oh, and here's who spoke here. And uh, I've mentioned this earlier. Somebody has been working on putting together a list of those names. We're going to work on a central place where those can be found. It is on my to-do list, probably going on the website that we're working on for the channel here. But I love that. I just love that. And if you guys don't already know, uh, Aaron has a new in-studio setup that is super exciting where he can do in-studio interviews with guests. And he's going to work on getting those edited. So kind of a different format compared to what he's been doing. And I think that's super exciting. Aaron is amazing at doing interviews. Um, unless it's somebody like me where I just talk the entire time and don't give him a chance. <laughs> But I am super excited about that. Super excited. We're going to see more of that. Okay. I also, this made me laugh. I just cracked up. Bo Beats, you over there, like making me crack up. Bo Beats, who many of you know, she jumps in on the channel here too. Uh, you just got to see this. I thought it was so funny. Uh-oh. Oh, what, what's this? Bo Beats says he's going to have to borrow Natalie's menopause fan. <laughs> Well, I don't need a fan, guys. I don't. I don't need this gorgeous hair blowing in the wind <laughs> over Costco. <laughs> really quick, just short, but I thought that was so funny because you guys know, you guys know, I got the menopause fan going. I got the plugged in one now because my battery operated one was just. I kept forgetting to charge it, so now we are hardwired in. I just got to show up. My Tony got it all set up for me, and I really appreciate it. But I thought that was super funny. Super funny. Jessica Palmadessa, she is here on YouTube and she was over at this new billboard that the Aftermath Foundation put out and Scientology responded with some new tech, right? We know we've got blind tech, manure tech, where they make a manure moat around the celebrity center. Blind tech, all kinds of tech, runaway tech. Now we have crane tech. <laughs> this is hilarious. Check this out. A second. I actually got multiple videos sent of this from um, different different uh, creators here on YouTube. This is so great. Check it out. Hold on, I'm trying to get the. Okay, so. So you see, she, you she's you got a clear shot of the billboard there, but then wait. The crane. <laughs> that is the cherry picker that Scientology rented and put up to try to block the sign. And then, so there's the building. There's the building, there's the building, right, right, right. And then you turn and it's like, oh, what's that? Oh. A crane with a, uh, a billboard behind it that says, need help leaving Scientology. Now I'm getting back. My How great is that? And typical of Scientology, let's put up a crane. Let's put up a crane to block the billboard. And then what happens? The crane brings even more attention to the billboard because the fact that they did it and they're trying to block it, that in, in itself is news and something that people are going to be talking about and pointing out. That is just, you know what, one thing I guess you can depend on with Scientology is they're fairly consistent in their foot bullets. <laughs> this is another one. Oh, it's just crazy. But do you believe that? Billboards there, number to call for the Aftermath Foundation. If you're thinking, if you need help leaving Scientology, right next to full Scientology, plus right where, where Jessica was standing is where the cadet organization was. It was called the ATA. And that's where the cadets were and kept and a lot of horrific things went on back there. And uh, I think it's poetic to have that billboard right there. But uh, yeah, people are buzzing. You can still totally see it. You're right, LL Jer Jersey girl. You can still see the billboard from the street. So funny. Yep, Lily, they are. They're so funny. Lori plays, nail, hit the nail on the head. Flunk. Flunk Scientology, but then well done for bringing even more attention to it by your actions. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry I didn't get all the laughs out over that one. When I saw it, I just I just about died. I was like, no, that has to be, you know, someone's doing work over there. But no, no, totally them. Totally them. <laughs> Okay, and as if it wasn't enough foot bullets by Scientology, what also happened is a recruiter for Scientology tried to recruit none other than Scientology Audit Streets LA, William Good. And if you've been following this channel or any in the SPTV community for that, you know, for that matter, you would know he is probably not high on the list of people that would join Scientology, but that did not stop a recruiter who looked like somebody we have not seen before and obviously did not know who William Good was, but uh, William went along with it for a little while. And we are going to take a look at that because it's just so fabulous. And I love it so much. All right. Take a little look and a listen at this. Uh, it's a ad that was played during the Super Bowl. I oh, know, but what is it for? Scientology. Oh, you guys are recruiting for Scientology? Yeah. What's, what's so good about Scientology? Well, you find out more about who you are. You find out who you are? Yeah. I heard something about smoking. They said if you smoke cigarettes, it reduces your risk of cancer. Is that really true? Well... I heard L. Ron Hubbard said that you you get cancer by not smoking. Well, the thing is, is, you know, there's a lot of factors to things that cause cancer. You could get cancer from, like, standing out in the sun for too long, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, like, he was saying that you should smoke to prevent cancer. Uh, That's kind of... Where did you hear that? I saw it in an interview with some paperwork. So. You guys over here still? Yeah. Oh, one more thing! Es una secta, es un culto! Scientology is a cult! <laughs> he uh, walked back to the Hollywood Testing Center, I believe, with the young guy who went in there. And he definitely, you'll notice he's wearing street clothes. He's not wearing the Scientology uniform or even something that's a little bit more for the workplace, which you would be expected to wear in a Scientology organization as a staff member. So they're just trying to be a bit more sly and on the down low. And uh, it, you know what it could be too? He's either a staff member for the Los Angeles organization. He could be a Sea Org member in street clothes, handing out promo for Scientology. He could also be somebody who got in trouble with Scientology and is doing his what's called lower conditions where you need to make up the damage, which would be going out and handing out some Scientology promo. It could really be any of those things. But boy, he honestly, I think he pulled in William Good because maybe this will help open his eyes, right? That that kid might go, whoa, wait a minute, what's he talking about? And L. Ron Hubbard did say that smoking doesn't cause cancer, not smoking enough does. I think it was in a lecture. I think it was in a lecture. So William Goode was spot on about that, spot on about that. I just love how he how he played along with that and how how he handled it. Also over on Hollywood Boulevard outside the testing center, William came across a kid and his family who stopped him to get a picture and share a school project that this kid did on Scientology. This is so cool to me when young people are inspired by activism and are, you know, he went and did a school project then on Scientology. Him and it sounds like some of his friends as well watch William. And uh, it was really cool. I think it was cool for him to run into him and get a picture. But let's t let's give this a little look and a listen. Well, you're on you're on YouTube right now, so so it's all live. Uh, My phone vibrates. I'm like, oh look. YouTube, must be streets. Oh shit, he's down the block. I'll just wait there right here and watch yeah, him go by. He's texting me right now. It's like, so you got Isaac Hayes, who was South yeah, Park yeah. Scientology, and you got the background on it. And uh, he somehow has a book about Dianetics and their like holiday celebrations. We have Remini and Tom Cruise. Then we have you in it. He says, hey, streets. Avi, what's up, brother? Our takeaways, you want a free personality test. And it just 
isn't that just so cool? And then Will gives his other friend a shout out who just so happens to be texting the kid at the time. It is so cool to meet your heroes and you can tell that Will's a hero to these these kids who've been following them and learning about Scientology. And it is always my hope that when people learn about Scientology, that they also learn about cults and understand that Scientology is one cult of many, but they follow a very similar playbook. L. Ron Hubbard wrote his own custom playbook on how to create a cult, how to run it, and what to do when you're in the cult. And Scientology follows that playbook like crazy. Nadia, yes, I love that the kids are seeing all of this. Very true, very true. Me too, I absolutely love that. Now, there was something else very interesting shared yesterday. This is from his Film the Police account that we're going to share. And you guys might recall the guy who rode the scooter all the time. I think it's a scooter. Uh, some people, I think, I think some people refer to him as Rat Boy. I'm not 100% positive, but I think so. Tell me in the chat because you guys know who I'm talking about. And it was on, on video that Scientology security approaches him because he was known to harass and threaten other protesters. And I think he might have a warrant. It's like, this guy is bad news. And who approaches him and offers to help and maybe give him a hookup? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. This is Scientology in action exactly what they do. So let's give this a skateboard guy. Yes. Is that what he's called, Nadia? Skateboard guy? Yep. Rap boy or skateboard guy. <laughs> Thank you guys. I love the chat. This is why I love doing this live and in real time. Check it out. Isn't that in that way? Isn't that do you have a number? Why? Yeah, I, just someone to contact you if you're willing. If you're not, whatever. Uh, uh, who's trying to contact me? I don't know. Someone called me. See, he's saying someone's trying to contact you if you're willing. And guy says, well, who's trying to contact me? He's like, oh, somebody above me. It should be the sound, but it's good for people to hear us. I, I don't. I, oh, you I don't want? Hey, I'll go on yeah. mute. And then he mutes. Hey, that was the Scientology security guard. Um, he said, listen, man, um, I have people up top that want your phone number. Do you mind? Can I have a number for you? I said, listen, you know, I've been in contact already with a few of the guys in there. Um, we've had very cordial conversations and uh, um, I'm not against anything that they're doing, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Scientology security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, we just had a pretty in-depth conversation right now. They pulled me to the side. He said, listen, I was actually walking away on the skateboard. And he was like, uh, he said, hey, listen, man, um, I got people that want to talk to you. He's kind of scared me. He said, listen, uh, aren't you to be alarmed or anything? They just, you know, they want to help you out. Yeah, they want to help you out. They want to help you out. Why? Because skateboard guy slash rat boy completely flipped and has been working against and threatening. He threatened Jessica Palmadesa. He's threatened streets. And right there on video, you can see this is what Scientology does. They very much follow that. What's that saying? The the enemy of my enemy is my friend. 100% they follow that. And you saw it. They sent security out. Get this guy's contact info because they think they can turn him into an ally for Scientology. And they will fund him to do shenanigans and get up to no good completely. And here's kind of, it's not sad because you know what, if you're going to go along with that, then you have to live with the consequences of the fallout from that. But Scientology will not have your back. They will turn on you in a second. They will use you. They will make it sound like you're somehow going to benefit by going after their critics. All he is, is a tool for Scientology. And not only will they drop them, they will completely turn against him. So it seems like he's teaming up with them and it seems pretty on brand for both. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Not just saying Jessica has a restraining order against him. Yep. Absolutely. And I, um, capital call out, I think he did try to get a TRO, temporary restraining order on streets, but I don't know that he did. LL Jersey girl says it best. He's a tool. All right. <laughs> oh, and cam LA cam has a restraining order against him. This is, not somebody who's right. Um, 
So I'm glad that they're aware of it. And now people know, because it's definitely somebody they need to keep an eye on because Scientology's, if they haven't already, is definitely going to try and use them as ways to disrupt and cause trouble and do their dirty business. And he's going to get totally chewed up, totally chewed up, totally used. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. La Poubelle. La Poubelle is asking to delay their liquor license hearing till November because of protests. I don't quite get what one has to do with the other, but you know what? Let's approach this with an open mind. So basically it's all blah, blah, blah. For reasons beyond her control or foresight, the project site has been exposed to recurring protests. Said disruptions have forced her to cease business operations on more than one evening, avoid physically entering her own establishment, and rely on already taxed LAPD resources to protect her patrons. Really? Really? Let's talk about that for a minute. To protect your patrons. It was witnessed that you and your staff were telling your patrons to go out and slap the hands, slap the phones, be antagonistic, cause trouble with the protesters out there. We know this. We know this. So, girl, you lying. Uh, the issue at hand in our appearance is one specific condition in her recent entitlement grant. Neither that condition nor the restaurant writ large is germane to the agitator's motivations. Their mission relates to the nearby Church of Scientology and allegations made public during the trial of a prominent member. I want to reiterate that the violence taking place on an almost nightly basis has no bearing on La Poubelle, nor does it reflect any wrongdoing by the proprietor. Really? Attached is a Los Angeles Times article corroborating our concerns. The applicant being targeted does open the possibility that these conflicts could spill into the commission's chambers. For the safety and integrity of the appeals process, we deem it necessary to push this item to a date whence we can safely forecast these adverse externalities will have subsided. That is just such a bunch of word salad. This distraction has challenged the uh, the appealant's ability to reasonably prepare her presentation and could tarnish the proceeding. We contend it is in all parties' best interest to postpone until the focus can return to the salient issue presented by her CUP. Thank you for your time and consideration. So, okay, so she is a CUP. So she has a conditional conditional use permit, which is given by the city for her liquor license, it sounds like. And obviously, you know, this is also going to backfire because now I do not know. And if somebody knows, tell me in the chat or tell me in the comments, did this get approved or is this just going before the council and then they're going to decide on it? That I did not find out. So if somebody knows, let me know. All they're doing is giving us more lead time. They just think this is going to go away that suddenly these protests that are growing every single day over Scientology, about Scientology, exposing Scientology, are somehow just going to go poof and stop come November. No, fine, do it in November. That gives people more of a chance to get there and be prepared for it. But I don't know which way that's going to go, actually. So we got to keep an eye on that. You know what? Uh, DOA, Scotty did a great video on it. So it's either going to be on the lore of DOA or his other DOA channel. If you want to get more information, he might have more info on that too. Nancy, let me know if you see Scotty pop in at all. And let's ask him about it. Because even though they sent that, it doesn't mean that it was approved. And it's not still going to happen. So my hope is it's still going to happen at the time that it says it was going to. So Amanda Beaumont saying DOA posted a link to a webcast for the hearing. Okay, fantastic. That's great. So then it is still happening, which would be good. Okay, good. So it's on the community tab on DOA's page. I will try to remember to grab that and share that, share that information as well. Uh, Leah. Supportive Leah. Leah did an update, gave a little bit of an update about Danny, who is still sitting in jail, wrongfully arrested. We all saw the video with the older man who took his scooter that he was pushing around and tried to run Danny over it, who dodged to get out of the way. We all saw it. We also saw earlier video that literally Michael shared showing the man 
following and videoing literally Michael with the same scooter. So it is obvious what he's trying to do. And this is, it's so unjust, but Leah gives a little update. <laughs> so I got some interesting WTF news. Like, so I came to the DA to, to the courthouse, whatever. According to the to them, that the Danny's case is still considered. It's a felony. They're trying to charge him with the felony, and um, uh, how did he say it? That the that Danny is Danny's case is still considered being copying is still in the copying bookings areas. I'm not. He said copying something, but he was speaking really low. You know what helps when I unmute myself? <laughs> I just do it to make sure you guys are listening. That was a test. And you all passed in the chat. You passed. <laughs> all right. So it's interesting that it sounds like it wasn't on the docket for today as of yesterday. So that's something that uh, we, again, need to keep an eye on. It's so ridiculous I, I just can't even, I can't even with this. We saw the video. It's so blatantly harassment and shenanigans by Scientology. It was such a setup and so obvious. This is, um, you know, this all is going it, to, it's going to continue to backfire and it's going to backfire as well on the LAPD and anyone else in that system who does not do what the legal just and right thing is. You can't, you can't do this to people. And at what point does the LAPD go, you know what? We don't want to go down with Scientology because Scientology is a sinking ship. It is. It's cracking. It's falling apart. They're, they aren't getting the new people in. They're heavily dependent on the children of Scientologists. And if you follow any of us here on SBTV who are second, third generation Scientologists, you'd know, especially ex org members, their motto is we come back. And we did. But we came back to expose Scientology and to get the word out about it and share these stories so something can be done about it and stop these kinds of relationships with the LAPD where people are being harmed, absolutely being harmed. So just a Northern girl says he has to see a judge within 48 hours beginning Monday. They're drawing this crap. Yep. It's all done to try to intimidate and convince people to not protest Scientology. And Danny is someone who's been hitting a lot of Scientology organizations, not just in Hollywood, but he's been to Chicago, Austin, Denver, and I'm sure there's going to be more, more to come as well. More to come for sure. There was an article, speaking of Chicago, there was an article that came out, which I linked down below so you can read the whole thing. I probably won't read the whole thing. It's from the Chicago Sun-Times. Give Scientology a break. The opening of a new Chicago center occasions rehashing of serious accusations against the organization. I thought it was kind of interesting. There were a few points in here. You know, they kind of just talk about, you know, how, hey, there's controversy with Scientology, but they got this new building that's opening. And they go over some of the upsets that people have with Scientology. And... Uh, but here, of course, opening a new business isn't the hard part. It's the staying open part that is the trick. And here, like any hopeful restaurant or internet startup, Scientology's new center faces challenges, as Kent explained when we spoke. Few, if any of them, seem to be succeeding, he said. So few, if any, of the Scientology organizations seem to be succeeding. We know this to be true. The buildings are gorgeous, but the number of staff in them is very low. It does not appear that members of the public are flocking to these attractive buildings to take the courses that Scientologists are offering. 
So that, uh, that's, you know, that's what all the evidence indicates, Ken says. The church claims 10 million members, and in a letter to the Sun-Times reacting to the paper's March 7th story on the opening of the center, calls suggestions it is shrinking ludicrous. Scientology says it's ludicrous that they're shrinking. That is ludicrous. <laughs> I don't know. I like that word, ludicrous. I got to work it into my vocabulary more. I never say that. Ludicrous. Maybe that's better than ridiculous. That's ludicrous. <laughs> I, I, don't, I think that's the first time I've heard sign or um, Scientology respond with the word ludicrous. I could totally be wrong. They're ludicrous. All right, let's go over to Chicago and look at some blind tech. Windy, windy, seat, windy City Phaeton Watch. He sent over, uh, and other people sent me this too, a couple of links on what he caught, including blind tech, which we are seeing all over the place. We got Hey Carrie Ann and others in Portland who, who are setting records. And I think Windy City Phaeton Watch was trying to set a record as well to see if he could get that blind tech to kick in. I think it I think it took 10 minutes, but let's take a look at what he saw. Never realize you're in a cult. You're just made to uh, end up. Oh, here we go. Blind tech. Oh. Blinds are coming down. Blinds are coming down. We're ashamed of our church. We know that we do wrong. Come on. You want to get these two? You want to get these two? Is the um, shot clean? I know that, it, again, I've got the telephoto on here so that I'm bringing the audience in closer. Uh, yeah, I don't know that, I definitely didn't beat Portland. So Portland's doing better, but <laughs> we did get some movement. There you go in Chicago, blind tech in action. And I think it's hilarious that different protesters around the country are working on getting the record for the closest blind tech activation. Activate the blind tech. I would imagine that's what they say inside of Scientology when they see the protesters coming and they get too close. Is there a drill? Is there a safe word when the protesters show up and they need to activate blind tech? Because in the C organization, there's something called a blow drill. When somebody leaves, when a member does not show up to one of the three, four roll calls during the day and is now missing, they do what's called a blow drill where they track them down. So do they drill and practice pulling down the blinds, not making eye contact? I don't know. I bet they do because in Scientology, you drill everything. You drill and practice everything. So my imagination kind of gets runs away with that. And that's, that's how I imagine it. Scientology has a safe word. And then boom. Blind tech. <laughs> and they practice it too. It's ludicrous. <laughs> okay, we're also going to look at Windy City Thetan Watch also shared a very creepy video with this guy from, where's he from? Blue Star Security, which is the security team that was there for the opening, I believe, and may have been the security team that assaulted the elderly man who was on the spectrum just trying to go get some donuts. Which, of course, reminds me. They stole my donuts in Chicago. I know you guys know this. What is it with Scientology trying to keep people from donuts? That's The guy was trying to go to the donut place. Scientology stole my donuts when I was there. They knew they weren't for them. They probably thought I sent them in there for them. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. Look at that. Like creepy. Ooh, there should be some kind of music in the background. It's very ominous. Very ominous. Yes, Cheryl Ray, the donut caper. Okay, let's see here. Let's take a look at this. Oh, the guys did over on the other side. How you doing, sir? I'm on a public sidewalk. Can't trespass the eyes. So, oh, look, Chicago officer. Retired or off duty, helping protect people who cover up crimes, helping protect people who rape, helping protect people who have elder abuse. So very proud of my CPD from one gang to another, right? Hope you're proud. Family seeing that you're supporting the cult of Scientology. But, you know, 
Anything during anything during a dollar, right? Dude's just standing there, <laughs> standing there with a death stare to scare off the protester. <laughs> oh, that's right. Capital call out. Can't trespass the eyes. Can't trespass the eyes. <laughs> yep. Pippi Longstocking. He looks like Xenu. <laughs> It's creepy for sure. Creepy for sure. Also, what was creepy was Clearwater, Florida, where Lori plays, came across some potential Scientology spies. It was a real in the moment thing if you were watching her live. Like, oh my goodness. Lori's so sly too. Like, she's so good at it. You can tell she's ex-law enforcement. I love how she handled this. This is outside Clearwater, Scientology. This is Lori plays who's here on YouTube links down below to these videos so you can go follow these creators and show them some support as well check it out i haven't seen a camera yet so we could do it like this and see what happens meanwhile you know it's just me talking with my friends and uh yeah i can tell that there's at least a driver and a front seat passenger and I'm wondering if they're waiting to pick someone up or if they're waiting for me to leave. Not they are talking, not filming. It's good that you can you can see that better than I can. What an awesome mod. Yeah, they just pulled up as I was. That's why I stopped walking, because I heard a car pulling up. I haven't seen a camera yet. So we could do. So she ended up walking over there eventually, and then they drove off. So very sus, very sus. But I just love how Lori just, let's just tackle this head on here. And she turns the camera around. I thought that was just brilliant. I love that. I love that. Okay. Kansas City. Kansas City is picking up. And uh, Casey Cat, I think that you are here. Um, in fact, let's do this. I thought I saw, yep, Casey Cat, thank you so much for that. Sadly, we did not receive a warm welcome by the Kansas City or yesterday. Shocking, blind tech happened in 10 minutes. See, 10 minute blind tech. Casey Cat, can you send me a link to your YouTube channel? Because I was having a hard time um, finding it. Natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. I, ha I couldn't find it, but I did find this clip to a video from Auditing Scientology, first visit to Kansas City. And I think this is you with him, but I wasn't 100%. So can you tell me in the chat? And uh, I think that was you. I think that was you. I'm going to play that. But Nancy, if you see her respond to that, can you throw it up in the in the stars part? But I, I think that's you, Casey Cat, in this video we're going to share of Kansas City. So they're getting out and protesting now there. This is great. I wonder how far a drive that is from Minnesota to Kansas City. I did it once before, but I just don't remember. Up to about five foot eight. What's that? About five foot eight. What do you? Uh, no, I think we'll stay out. Stay out here with our cameras. I don't know. So far, we've gotten a friendly reception from the people that got by. Even the guy who activated the shade tech was somewhat friendly, or he wasn't hostile. So that's in Kansas City. And interesting, the staff member there comes by, goes in, and asks them if they're coming in. And they're like, nah, no, man, we're just going to stay out here. <laughs> Which again goes to show that depending on where you are, not all Scientology staff have been have been told about protesters and people live streaming because sometimes protesters are showing up at different Scientology organizations and it seems like they just have no idea and they invite them inside. Even when they've got their cameras out, they invite them inside. 
we saw, I forget where else we saw this happen, but I know we saw it happen recently. And I think that's so interesting. <laughs> they're not telling them. They're not. They're not. They're telling some. Because, you know, I've told you guys this before. The way Scientology works is they will offer up a confidential briefing. And anytime you hear those two words together, it means prep your wallet because they're coming at you for money. And they're going to tell you, this is a confidential briefing just for those of you who need to be in the know. And there are criminal, dangerous, violent protesters outside. Ignore them, but we need to fight them. We need to fight them. <laughs> That's why we need your money. That's totally the drill. 100% that is the drill. Now, let's jump over to Austin where Miss Kim was also a, a Scientology recruiter was trying to recruit her, which again, I'm like, She's got the camera. She's setting it up in front of the org. You just had your opening. Do you not know about the protesters? But you still try to hand her some promo that would invite her into the organization. I don't get it. I don't get it, but I love it. So this is Miss Kim over in Austin. She's out there too with our Pearl Snappy in Austin. I am still cracking up about Pearl Snappy putting the David Miscavige doll in a Barbie Jeep and driving it around the front. That was just hilarious. This is uh, Miss Kim calls it Grandma Be Mad. Sainto is using police and pawns to attack us. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good. I got a film ticket. No, ma'am. I'm not here for that. Okay. What I am here for. And there they go. Exactly what I want to happen. There goes the doors. So they were out there handing out their promo, doing their recruitment, and Miss Kim shows up. They offer her one, <laughs> but then they go inside and close the doors. Jeez, that was 36 seconds. Now, what was funny is I walked right across through here to the coffee shops. I, the reason I'm late is I had to go tinkle. Oh, there goes the blinds. There they go. There. There. Oh, there goes another one. And I haven't closed those yet because I haven't walked over there. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. She's out there. I mean, that did not take any time at all. It could possibly be a new record with the blind tech. We are going to have to, you know what? We might have to do like a slow motion finish kind of thing and rewatch all of it and double check the times. But uh, yeah, what are they doing here? Come in for a free a film. You see, she's setting up the camera, but then they catch on and they all go inside and they close the doors. Very, very interesting. It's great to see so much that is still happening there in Austin. And like other places, these Scientology protests are only growing. Jeff, over at PTS for Life, he showed something interesting, which we talk about here on the channel. Uh, we're going to talk about this some more, but I thought it was great that Jeff brought this up. It's short, but I just wanted to give you guys a little look and a listen here of what he says. Um, by Thursday at 2, as you guys know, Thursday at 2 is weekending for Scientology. So if you really want to annoy someone, um, especially Osa, show up at like 1.30 on a Thursday <laughs> to protest the org, and that will uh, that will piss them off. <laughs> um, by Thursday. That's pretty much it, and I love that, and I agree. Jeff is doing such an amazing job over on his channel. You, if you, if you're not subscribing and following him, you will want to. He's been doing those dear Scientologist videos. He's been having people on who are protesting Scientology in Canada. Just very insightful. I agree. Kelly Mills, he is. He is doing a great job. I'm a big fan. Okay, now we're gonna hop over to do Australia because. This was amazing. This is a clip from a video. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da. We are going to share it from here. This is in Perth, Australia, where these protesters come across what looks to be a new Scientologist. It, at least he's got to be a newer Scientologist because number one, he talks to them and has a conversation. Secondly, he doesn't seem scared off by the fact that they share some very confidential 
super confidential Scientology information with him. And that does not seem to scare him off. I thought this was very interesting. Let's take a little look and a listen here. So before you joined up, you hadn't done any research into Scientology at all. Um. Did you read Dianetics? And that actually, okay. And the engrams and stuff, you were all okay with that? Okay. So do you know what the clear cognition is? Yeah. So once you do all the bridge and you go to become clear in your auditing session, there's a particular... I just like, I love the way that Australians say clear. Clear. When you become clear, I could just listen to them all day. The phrase that you need to say, and they don't tell you this, for you to become clear, and it's that you mucked up your own reactive mind yourself and you're not doing it anymore save a lot of money that's what you need to do to become clear that you've mucked that you've I've, done your own i've mucked up my own reactive mind and i'm not doing it anymore yep that's the clear cognition yeah i don't know i so far I, it's like anything like in the universe in the school. Yeah. well that's the answer you mock you muck you've made up your own reactive mind and you're not doing it anymore. That's what they will tell you when you're clear. And then you get to OT3. You've heard of the OT3 materials, haven't you? No, don't tell us. No, I haven't. I'm just trying to keep one step at a time. You should look up the OT3 materials that we were here 75 million years ago. Um, Lord, the Galactic Confederacy, Lord Zeno brought us all here and dropped us into volcanoes. All this stuff's online, mate. You really have to look it up. <laughs> it's just amazingly fabulous. All this stuff is online. You just need to look it up. She gives him the clear cognition, which is super confidential. If you're in Scientology, it's out on the internet and everywhere. Then proceeds to tell him about Xenu and the Scientology origin story. Being dropped in volcanoes. The galactic overlord. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely Scientology was created by a science fiction writer. You can tell. You can tell. You can totally tell. All right. We are going to jump over and we are going to start talking about, oh, no, Nora, calling out Mike Rinder, what the discussion is about. If you have a question, put question in front of it and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to as many as we can. But I wanted to share, Alan Sanderson, thank you so much for that. Jessica Palmadessa said on stream today that the liquor license meeting got delayed to November. Okay. So we know that then it got delayed till November. Good. Now we got time to pick out our outfits, right? <laughs> got time to plan if anybody wants to be there and you have to do some traveling. Now we got time. So that's great. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Rika, free Natalie's donuts, free DOA socks, free Danny. Most importantly, of course, is freeing Danny. But uh, there is, there does seem to be a weird, weird thing with Scientology and donuts lately. Lately, it is very odd. Ellie, yes. Oh, no, Nora, oh, no, Nora was amazing yesterday. She did a fabulous job. Absolutely. Liz Ferris. Hey there. How are you this morning? Love your lives. They make my morning. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I always love when I see you in here in the morning. It's just like you're joining us for coffee. It's just like a little hug. Distance hug. Distance hug. <laughs> I love seeing my fellow creators in here. It's just great. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so let's get over to this because, oh gosh, I got to tell you, you if you guys are not following Oh No Nora, you need to be. She does a really good job of like bringing, bringing the receipts, as they say, showing the Scientology think and actual Scientology references behind certain actions that are taken. And she's, she did a video yesterday where she made some parallels. We are just going to look at a snippet of it, uh, but you definitely got to go see the whole video. So I got a link to it down below. But let's talk about this. I was overwhelmed with emails about this, which is a good thing because again, it helps me figure out like, what should we be covering? Because now there's so much awesome content, so much great content out there that we need to 
there, you know, there's only so much time. So it's definitely, you don't hesitate to send me an email about something because I really do base what we share on what you guys send me, what I see as well, but uh, definitely what you guys are paying attention to. So let's take a look. Hey, Liz Gales here too. Hey, Liz, great to see you. Okay. Let's give this a little look and a listen and we shall discuss. This is a battle that has been completely manufactured solely by Mike and um, continues on by him because he said what he said. We said what we said. The dust was settled. We'd all moved on, right? We're all talking about what's going on with the protesters, what's going on with, you know, things getting shut down. Nope. It's got to keep punching. Got to keep punching because if he is not perceived as the de facto leader out here as the person with all of the knowledge and there's other experts. Uh oh, hot dog. He might not be the one. Okay. So I, I have a lot of Scientology references to go over here, but I want to just show them to you guys. This is fascinating what she went over. And from my perspective, it's really fascinating because a lot of this, I just forget about. It's things we studied in Scientology, but one of the big things that I know I wanted to do was just drop it and forget a lot of it. And the more that I talk about it and do things here on YouTube, it starts coming back like, oh my gosh, that's right. I forgot that we used to do that. I forgot that we were trained to do it that way. And that is what, what might be playing out. She just brings this whole other knowledge base to it. And we're going to take a look at what she's referring to, where this all kind of came up from is because Mike Rinder over on his blog, he did a blog and it was about a social media expert analysis of SPTV and there was an article that he's got a link to the original article, um, Activist Fandom and the Defanging of the Anti-Scientology Movement. And he snips just a little bit of it. And he says, unfortunately, it contains fancy terms. It would be more understandable if she used simple language, but it's enlightening nevertheless. The conclusion is this, along with the second footnote from earlier in the article. So he just snipped a couple things, not in order, but just from the article. What started as a fight against Scientology has transformed into a fight against the main character of the week, diffusing the motivated indignation against the big bad into negative attachments to the people who have become fan objects. The mission isn't to take down Scientology anymore. It's to keep those stats up. And then he says, Two, at this time, the Aftermath Foundation is the only one dedicated to helping people leave Scientology. Now, I thought it was also interesting when I was re-looking at this this morning, there's a comment in here that's in there where this is uh, M. Western says, and I wanted to share this because I thought it gives it some more context and was interesting. <clears throat> The mission isn't to take down Scientology anymore. It's to keep those stats up. So that's a quote from the original article. Even if we accept the author's appeal to motive, such black and white thinking presents a false dilemma. It's not necessarily one or the other. There is also an implication the anti-Scientology crowd, her word, is a monolith and that everyone is on the exact same page. I see this often, usually when references are made to the LGBT community, the black community, the Muslim community, etc. This is once again, black and white thinking. There is no crowd. There are just people who happen to have something in common, in this case, a critical interest in Scientology. This seems far too nuanced for the author who lazily assigns assumed motives and agendas to a diverse mix of people. And it, it goes on, and it is definitely worth reading the whole thing because it's, that is, that's kind of the truth. There's, it is a black and white thinking to say that it's this or that, that, you know, we somehow can't hold more than one thought in our heads or that you can't. When I read it and I read the original article, it, uh, which there's a link to there in uh, Mike Rinder's blog post, I thought, you know, it's very insulting to the people who are following and learning and educating and lending their voices and their support to ending Scientology. And there will be a degree of those disagreements will always exist, right? There's differences of opinion on the best way to end Scientology, 
on where accountability plays or does not play. There will be a multitude of opinions about this. It doesn't need to be this black and white, you're on this team or you're on this team. No, that's not my perspective at all. I think bringing to the forefront these conversations, not shying away from these disagreements, maybe even taking a deeper dive into them can often open our eyes to a broader understanding of it and maybe even giving a little more understanding to each other about it all all across the board. And I think the mistake that gets made or has been made in the past is not addressing it, is not talking about it, not bringing it to the forefront and going, all right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this idea of black and white thinking. Let's talk about what a lot of people will identify as pot stirring. Sometimes these things need to come out, need to be discussed. And I think it's human nature as well. It's something that we're always going to see, especially when there are different opinions. But the thing is, you can have more than one. I can still respect the work that Mike Rinder has done to expose Scientology and at the same time be, I don't know what the word would be. Maybe it's like disappointed in his response when it comes to victims, specifically Miriam Francis, and um, specifically how things were handled with Aaron. Yeah, I can disagree with those things, but I can also respect the work that he's done, and I know he will continue to do. The Aftermath, Aftermath Foundation got that billboard up, and it's out there, and it's boom. If you're, you, know, you need help leaving Scientology, here's what you can do, Right. And hopefully changes are being made to make the board more diverse so that they can serve a larger audience. Aaron at Growing Up in Scientology is creating another foundation to do the same thing, which is really needed. Why? Because there are different people in Scientology. The commonality is we were Scientologists, but we are each individual different people that got into Scientology for different reasons, that left for different reasons. Some of us have shared experiences. Some of us do not. Some of us have very different experiences. It's all, it all can be true. Just because one person might have had a horrific, abusive experience in the Sea Organization or in Scientology, does that mean that every single Sea Org member or every single Scientologist experienced that? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And vice versa, if you had a great experience in Scientology or in the Sea Organization, does it mean that somebody else wasn't abused or essayed or violently attacked? No, it doesn't. Both can be true. And that's where it's, you know, and I tell you guys, it's like what you send me, what your attention on, what you're interested in, that's what we're going to share here and talk about. And I'm not going to shy away from it because I think bringing it to the forefront and having some open dialogue and conversation can actually help move the needle forward. And sometimes there are going to be things are going to get heated and people are going to get upset because that's human nature, because we have emotions and we should have them. We should have a reaction to something that's appropriate. And there's just nothing wrong with sharing that, (laughs) if that makes sense. You guys tell me your thoughts. I'm going to jump in and grab some questions, and we're going to talk more about this. Let's see. We did that one. Miss Kim. Hey, Miss Kim. Thank you. Mike has lost the war because nobody cares about him anymore. He can't control the narrative. SPTV has left him behind. It has grown beyond that now. Um. I think that, you know, it's interesting because I don't even see it as a war. It's different people working different angles to end Scientology. Sometimes they agree. Sometimes they disagree. Sometimes they show up in ways that aren't their best foot forward and handle things in a way that's very reminiscent of Scientology and the Sea Organization. And when that's done, yeah, that's going to be triggering to people who are in the Sea Organization and who work with these same people. But, uh, I, great point of view, Miss Kim. Totally hear you. Casey Cat, thank you. Fun fact, LRH and his family have roots to Kansas City off and on that date back to 1911. I'm deep diving. I would love to hear more about that. And you are correct. I forgot about that. That's right. That is right. Uh, Tara, might be Tara, Tara. Uh, Mike Rinder may have physically loved Scientology, but that's it. At heart, he's still OSA. 
And there could be truth to that too. I've, I've wondered about this question myself. I look at my past in Scientology and in the C organization and as a staff member and what my viewpoint was and what I thought and how I felt about it and how that changed over time as I moved away from Scientology and as I discovered other tools to help me in life, right? Things that you can find in therapy, in counseling, in other forms of self-help. Maybe it's even in other forms of religion, whatever works for you whatever helps you give you tools so that you can get back in the driver's seat of your life and start making decisions for your, yourself and creating the life that you want. And sometimes that, that takes time. And I've changed so much on my point of view and my Scientology mindset and my cult culture and that cult mentality so much. So the question then is, and I think Tara makes a good point, is it, well, this might not be exactly her question. This is more kind of like what I'm thinking. Is it a matter of personality, right? Is it OSA training that's still intact and that's the default? Could very much be. I don't know. Could it also be personality, right? That's how a certain individual is. If somebody in Scientology has a certain personality, you know, that that really doesn't change much. I think my point of view changed so much because it wasn't really who I was. I got in trouble all the time <laughs> for being who I was, right? It seemed like I was having, like, you, you couldn't have fun and you couldn't joke around. And that's just more my nature. I think it's a lot of how it is, too, like growing up in, uh, growing up in Hawaii. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I want to make sure I'm grabbing your grabbing your questions here so you guys can tell me what you think about that. Um, oh, Robin had a question earlier. Has anyone called Loka OSHA, local OSHA? I think you're talking about uh, La Poubelle. Not sure about that. Not sure about that. OBG Foster, is my toxic ex-boss OSA or is toxic behavior just part of human behavior? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. And honestly, everyone, I don't have an answer to this. I don't have an answer to that. I just know that we can hold more than one thought in our minds that that can also that can be true. And that's a good point. Is that somebody who they are and how they are? Is it Scientology? Is it a combination? Miss Kim, thank you. My comment may not make sense. It was geared to what Nora explained. It's a perceived war on his part. Oh, I get what you're saying. Not for us. SPTV works because there's no leader. Yeah, exactly. That's very, very true. And and you're right. There's it takes, you know, it takes it takes more than one person to have a war, right? You got to have at least two people there. And uh yeah, I would say that would be true. There's I would agree with that. I would agree with that. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Sienna. I always feel like I'm going to pronounce that wrong. And I know you told me once and I knew I would forget, but I think it's Sienna. Scientology took your donuts to bribe the LAPD. <laughs> yes, I think so. Isen. Uh, cult, cult of Scientology rules and tactics have so much in common with narcissistic traits. I think it could be both with Mike Rinder. He can't stand not to be the center of attention now that SPTV moved beyond him. That, that could be. And that's the thing. It could be a combination. Can you have that point of view and maybe have maybe some OSA tactics or what's perceived to be OSA tactics as your default, but still be able to expose Scientology? Yeah, you actually can, because I think that's what we're seeing. And as much as we, and I mean, I'll just use myself as an example, as much as I want to encourage anyone, but especially Mike Rinder to maybe just try a little bit of, of finesse in the, com in the communication and not so much this kind of attacking and Nora made a good point. We kind of all moved beyond the last thing and we've been moving on talking about protests and all these different things. And then he comes out with a blog article and then attention kind of goes back to that again. That's what has happened the last few times. It seems that most want to, you know, do want to move beyond it, but they're also not going to not call it out when it happens. And when there's something put out there in a way that creates this idea that you have to make a choice, you don't. You can follow whoever you want to follow. 
You can subscribe to whoever you want to subscribe to. You can watch channels that where they don't disagree with each other. In fact, I think that's a great idea because you get to see different points of view. You get to see different ways that people look at the same thing, that they look at the same subject, the same topic. And when we can do that, see something from different points of view, my opinion is only then can we have a really well-rounded view of a situation and then have that result in more understanding. And I feel that what Nora did in her video was kind of bring more of that understanding. Here's what L. Ron Hubbard said to do in these instances. And she's making a tie and correlation to behavior that she's seeing specifically with Mike Rinder. And that makes sense too. I, I, I completely see that. And that's what's so fascinating about, about her video. Sweet Koala says, what would have been the right thing for Mike to do? He messed up pretty bad, but he was in a cult. He didn't, he clearly didn't change, unfortunately. Um, I think that he changed, this is just my opinion. I, th I think maybe not completely, but I think that he, that he did. How do you not? How do you not? When you've been in that situation and you leave and you go at Scientology and they attack you and your family and harass you relentlessly, uh, you just get more fired up to expose them. But I get, I think that the whole thing here is, is there too much of a default to what appears to be Scientology tactics? And this is something that, this is, these are people never in Scientology, by the way, most of who, what I'm reading and who I'm hearing from on this that have this point of view. So this isn't even, you can't even say that, well, these were people who were in the C organization together and now there's these disagreements. No, a lot of it is, it's it's people never in Scientology looking at it from the outside and saying, hey, that person's acting in a way that still seems a lot like OSA tactics. And when Nora can pull up the receipts of like, well, actually, yeah, <laughs> that is a tactic. It validates the concern and that question. But does it mean if he has that personality and that's where he's at that he still can't bring down Scientology? No, I think he can. He'll continue. He's done a lot to expose Scientology and he's going to do even more. They all are. That's never, that's not a question for me. It's, it's the question here is, you know, why do we keep coming back to this? Why, why bring it up in, in the blog, right? It kind of like all settled and then boom, here it is again. And I think that's the interesting thing to me is each step of the way, Mike Rinder has done something, communicated something in a way that really upset people and they found offensive in the lack of empathy and in the lack of understanding, especially when it comes to victims in Scientology, which that is pretty much what the second generations are. Second generation Scientologists have been, have experienced the brunt of Scientology abuses. And that's what kind of adds to, yeah, it gets it gets triggering and there's going to be a response. But my point is then then let's talk about it. I'm fascinated by the way people in never never in Scientology see this from the outside looking in. I think it really says a lot and I think it helps. Randy, Randy C says, good morning, everyone. I'm a never in, but from that objective perspective, I see Mike Rinder's blog this week as an attempt at self-affirmation. It's simply protection on, I think that might, on his part. Pat says, I think the foundation would work, but the NDA is so inappropriate. So the non-disclosure that people are required to sign now to be, to benefit from the Aftermath Foundation, she's saying is inappropriate. Uh, Lisa, cult of Scientology is a reflection of their founder, a narcissist. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. OBG Foster, we need to avoid mind reading. Don't assume you know what anyone is thinking. That's as to toxic as anything Rinder or Aaron does. Yeah, mind reading usually never helps. We can kind of speculate and outright see with our own eyes or hear with your own ears something. Uh, Yoki, Yoki. I think cult leaders are nar narcissistic. I saw a docu about Twin Flame, and I thought this looks like Miskevich and his cult. Omg, yes, I saw that too, and I agree. Very similar, very similar. And yes, cults do attract narcissists. 
That is true. Literally, Cherry Blackwell says Mike sees Osa everywhere. I get that too. I feel like a lot of times it's Osa's done some serious. I mean, you know, I also want to say if he sees Osa everywhere, he kind of has reason to. One, because he knows firsthand what they do because that was at his job at one point and he's actually experienced a, a ludicrous amount of harassment. Lithenda, thank you so much for that. Mike Rinder gives the impression that there are only two ways to fight the cult of Scientology, his way and the wrong way. And that doesn't resonate with the people in the movement. Yeah, I think you really hit the nail on the head here. There's more than one way to do it. And that is the thing. It's very black and white thinking, like that commenter was saying. It is very black and white thinking to say it can only be this way or to say the blog article where he wrote and and is reiterating that the Aftermath Foundation is the only organization helping people leave Scientology or something along those lines. Anytime someone starts saying, we are the only ones who can do this. We are the only ones with the answers. We are the only ones. My, for me, boom, boom, boom. My, my, my cult radar just goes off where I'm like, nope. I do not believe that. That is black and white thinking, which is cult thinking, which is something that I know I have moved away from and work to move away from because it's too easy to fall into that and think that it has to be one way or the other. No, it can be multiple ways. It can. It doesn't have to be one way. Leo Linda Lou 33, hip hip hooray. Thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate that support. Thank you. De Beach, thank you as well for becoming a member. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> Laurie in Georgia says, I find Mike Rinder irrelevant at this time. He screwed up a lot and the narrative has changed. Yeah, that's interesting. And as I understand it from people I hear from, it very much has to do with his response. Those responses to people in Scientology, you know, who've left Scientology or were victims of Scientology, specifically like Miriam and how things were handled with Aaron in voting him off the board, which even he said it's it's the best thing to happen to him. And I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Carol says, why do I think they have a jury? Because not one person can decide. Everybody has a voice and we must talk it over. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. We bit of Elton. Yes. Elton John's very wise with his lyrics. Often, often. Cheryl Ray says, I fear that NDA will set the example that they still don't have free speech. These are supposed to be supporting the newly blown. Not a good start for their freedom. Yeah, I get that. I get that totally, completely. 100%. Uh, Pick61 says, I just hope Mike Rinder's not been doing a long, deep black ops on Leah Remini. Him being a paid witness at her trial could be for her to lose it and help Scientology ruin her financially after uh, then it cuts off. But yeah, I, I don't think so. I don't think that that's the case. There's a lot of theories. That one would absolutely shock and surprise me. I don't believe that to be true. Kelsey, thank you so much for the super chat. Do you think Tom Cruise finds clearing the planet mission impossible? Love you, Natalie. Thank you. No, I think he believes it. Tom Cruise is a hardcore believer. A just dog with a bone believer. A radicalized believer. I would even go as far as saying that. You know, this is the same mom who got rid of his sister's child because she kissed a boy as a teenager and banned her from the family and the property. She didn't see her mother for two years. That's just one example of quite a few things that make me go, yeah, I don't think he, I think he believes that it's true. I, because even when I was in Scientology, there was a period of time where I believed that we could clear the planet. I believe that you know, that that was doable. And he is a hundred times more hardcore than I ever was. And I grew up in Scientology. Sci Tom Cruise got into Scientology as an adult. He has just taken to it. And uh, I think there's reasons for that. And a lot of it is kind of like what other commenters were saying about the narcissism. It definitely, if you have any narcissistic tendencies, 
Scientology might, uh, or at least the way Scientology operates, the behind the scenes in the C organization and staff would appeal to you, would completely appeal to you. Yep, Vegas Andrews, red flags. That is that is the thing. Salty writer, after mathology. <laughs> yep, exactly. And Asen, this is a good point. Our way is the only right way, is the starting point of every cult. And that that is what concerns me and bothers me and something I don't want to see. And I encourage people, watch who you want to watch. Subscribe who you want to subscribe to. Support the channels you want to support. We have the freedom to do that. Do what you want in that regard. There's no one saying that you you have to do, at least not on my end, or I think on most, if you look at different SBTV creators, it is... Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much that. There is no leader. It's, these are independent individuals doing their own thing who have a common shared experience, especially those of us who are in the C organization or on staff or a second, third generation Scientologist. There's a shared experience there that's really bonding, especially the C org experience because it was so hardcore. It was so hardcore. Roxy says, I think it's overwhelming for OSA to try to fair game all these new suppressive people and never end channel to, channels to monitor. They've been attacked. They ain't seen nothing yet. They've learned nothing since Anonymous. You are correct. And that is true. There's so many people speaking out now. Even the SPTV community is growing and will continue to grow. And there are so many channels outside of that that are covering Scientology. Down the rabbit hole news. She does an amazing job. I love Rabbit's perspective in what she covers. And, you know, Andrew Gold covers Scientology. There, there's just so many. Even J.D. DeLay, who has a genre more of the, uh, you know, after getting out of prison, has been talking about Scientology as it relates to Danny Masterson, but still bringing to the forefront what Scientology is and why it's labeled a human trafficking cult. It's just going to grow and grow. <laughs> You guys have got some great comments in here. Trailblazer Laura, thank you so much for that super chat. When Cult of Scientology goes down, Davey will take many others down with him and Mike Rinder will be one of those people. Mike Rinder has figured this out. That is why he's being so cautious about what he does and says. Hard to say with David Miscavige. I see him more running away, running away on his own. I... I think he is a coward and a bully. And often a bully has a lot of fear and cowardice and that's why they puff up. And they cannot, you know, when you're a leader, whether you work in a, think about it, any, if you work in a corporation, wherever you work and you have a boss or you have a leader, somebody running a team, right? You can inspire people through your own example and they want to help you and they want to work with you. And they want to help you get the job done and you work together to create a team. Or you can use force and bullying and threats. And that doesn't really go anywhere. We, we see it over and over again outside of Scientology and we see it in Scientology, specifically with David Miscavige in that way. Well, it's the same thing outside of Scientology in the ex-Scientology community, right? You could bully, you can name call, you can do all those things to try and get your message out. And that will resonate with some. Or... You can try to kind of lead a little bit more by example, and it's not about being, it's not about, it's interesting because it's not about us as individuals, but it is at the same time, right? Because even myself, I do these recaps, but I have my own story and experience in Scientology, which I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to come back on and do a live specifically about how I got out of the C organization, and I'll probably do that at noon central today. And if you guys can't catch that live, I hope you catch it on the replay. Sweet Koala, does anyone know if Mike Rinder could be prosecuted and what he is doing now is damage control? That is a great question. May somebody want to chime in about that? The Ethical Tailor, as a never in, I can tell that Mike would benefit greatly from therapy. He needs to change his outlook from Scientology indoctrination to critically thinking even his own thoughts and actions. Yeah, I would agree with that. That is some good advice. I know learning different tools is what helped me and helps me be able to go, okay, well, I agree with this. I don't with that, but I do appreciate this about it. 
I can see something more than one way. I find that really helpful. And, and in all honesty, my where I really started feeling free from Scientology was when I was I was able to start doing that. Take a step back and look at something and be able to separate out my emotion from what the actual fact is and process both. Feel the emotions, work through it, but then recognize, you know, it's not, you can have five people see a car accident, you get five different opinions about what happened. Five different views, five different responses. And I think all we can do is control who we are, how we show up in the world, right? Work it out for ourselves. And if somebody else disagrees and they want to go about it a different way, okay, fine. That's fine then. Just a Northern girl, Scientology life after a cult. Have you been contacted by under the radar since this new wave of protesting? I'm curious if the numbers have increased. Yes, they have. <laughs> I'll say that. Ben, Ben Bacon, but thank you so much. We all have areas we are growing in. I get that Mike Rinder needs to get past the zero sum thinking. You don't have to knock others down to rise. I like that. Yeah. Yes, I think you're right. I think you're very right. It is a different way of thinking. Look, even, you know, a lot of it, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, is an age thing too, right? My generation, I'm Gen X, I'm 53. How we were raised, completely latchkey. How our parents spoke to us, plus I had the whole Scientology thing in play. Very different from how my children are raising their children. They're not yelling and screaming or throwing things or, I mean, it's just, it's different. And because you learn better, you do better. Their eyes are more open. They aren't being raised in a Scientology household. Is a big difference there. Lisa says they can't change. They must do everything that LRH said. It's doctrine. I think if you're referring to Scientology, 100%, absolutely, 100%. And Ginger O Snap, yeah. You're right. I've seen more and more never in channels starting to cover Scientology stuff lately, which if you guys see something, say something. Send me an email, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com and send me a timestamp or a clip and a link to what you're looking at when you're seeing it at, on uh, other channels. Crazy Reiki Lady, Osa, Osa only has so many members, but we have endless numbers of people around the world joining in Cult of Scientology toppling. Absolutely, 100%. That is very true. Very true. And we're going to see more and more, more and more. Ginger will snap. I think Grant Cardone will be in jail before that happens. <laughs> Could be. He's under investigation from uh, what we hear by multiple three-letter agencies. Laura. Laura Flynn, true leaders empower others. Fake leaders make people think they need the leader. Yes, exactly. And that's what I love about the SPTV community. It's like, do you know, you do you share your experience. If you want to interview people, interview people. It's, it's one of the reasons why I try to, I try to get my eyes on as much of that content as I can. One mainly to support the other creators in the community because there are many different voices and different ways of going at this and they all matter and they're all valid. And it really helps me have more of an understanding of myself as well to hear their stories and what it's been like since they've left Scientology and what they deal with on the day to day. Ginger oh snap. Yeah. Nobody bullying Mike Rinder. We're asking for accountability. I do hear that. That's something that I hear a lot. And my Tony, thank you for the reminder. Hit the like button, everybody. And hit the subscribe button. Check your subscribe button because I'm continuing to get emails from people who said they are being repeatedly unsubscribed. Um, Boo is asking, what are the weird tie colors they wear? Like gold tie, silver tie? Is it some sort of status symbol? I do believe so. It has to do with what part of the organization that you work within. Let's see. You got, there's just so many great comments and questions here. Cats, bats, and flowers. The more Scientology is exposed, the better. The protesters have brought have brought the denied physical abuse to light. 
RPF, that's a rehabilitation project force. Danny, Mike Rinder and gang have blinders. Um, Danny, oh, Danny Masterson. Oh, excuse me. I thought I was going to sneeze there. BB, how soon do you think an adult just going, wait, how soon in do you think an adult just joining Cult of Scientology finds out David Miscavige's disposition and the way he runs things? I can't fathom joining and not running quickly after joining. They're not going to meet David Miscavige. Hardly anybody does. Uh, it, it's, he's just very isolated because, you know, he can't be accessible to the public anymore. There's too many process servers looking for him. <laughs> he's hiding. He's hiding and just sending people out to do his dirty work, hiring lawyers who hire lawyers who hire people like the guy with the scooter to go and try and run down people and pretend that it's some sort of an incident that happened and bring up false charges. Ludicrous. <laughs> Yeah, Mina and the whole of SPTV and the protesters are constantly shouting out the aftermath. That is very true. That is something that has continued despite the disagreement with how the board was made up, though I think they are making changes to that. That is true. It still exists to help people get out of Scientology, specifically the C organization. And, um, you know, I think people just got to continue to use their voice. If you're if you're supporting the organization, if you're supporting the Aftermath Foundation and you don't like the non-disclosure, you know, then bring it up. I think people talking about it and making it known, especially to them and giving that feedback in a constructive way, maybe directly to them, can be helpful because you don't know what you don't know. And when you're in an echo chamber, and I think that's kind of what was happening, this is my opinion, with the six, the three couples who... Most of them were at high levels in Scientology and the C organization. You're lacking a perspective outside of that. How can you not? That's why having a board that is diverse and including people never in Scientology, I see as being incredibly productive because the more representation you have on a board of any nonprofit, the more people you can help outside of that organization. The larger community, you can serve a larger community. Tara says, breaking cycles only work when you admit and accept the past. Once it happens, there's no going back. It's a beautiful thing. I would agree. I would agree with that. Bakes with butter. Yes, tomorrow is the big day. Tomorrow is L. Ron Hubbard's birthday. And in Scientology, that is their year end. So this Thursday is probably when their year end is ending. Because what is tomorrow? Wednesday? L. Ron Hubbard's birthday. And Scientology's year will end on Thursday at two o'clock. If you got time and you're nearby a Scientology organization today, in the coming days, definitely leading up to Thursday, two o'clock, would probably be a very fun time to protest. Bones Beach is yes, please send positive vibes to Danny and Leah today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you gelling? I think we're going to need two updates a day. We're getting there and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. A Perth Scientology audit. I may have a little picnic in the grass and the sunshine in front of the org. Fantastic. Please email me a link, natalie at lifeafteroccult.com. Okay, Groovy Witch, I'll go look for your email. You sent me stuff about the LRH birthday events in Clearwater. That's fantastic. Verity, Mike Rinder can't grasp that no one is being told. A large number of individuals have seen his behavior and turned away from him. He's at fault, not his imaginary leader of the internet. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And at the same time, there's still a lot of people who support Mike Rinder and should, right? It's like you, you we, we gravitate as people to the different creators, to the different people who are exposing Scientology because there's a connection there. And there, there, there are, there's definitely support for that, for Mike not changing one thing and he will still have people who support. So that says there are people who share that point of view. And if they can share that point of view and still end Scientology, then okay, we're not all going to see it the same way ever, <laughs> not ever. There's always going to be disagreement and we're going to often see that disagreement in between different generations. That's just human nature. 
And a lot of it in Scientology, it's there's a difference when you get into Scientology as an adult and you make that choice versus when you're raised in it or brought into it as a child because kids can't consent and make that choice. And you could argue that, well, even in Christianity, right, people often, depending on what church that someone belongs to, makes makes that choice for them, either as a teen, some think it's as kids, some it's as adults. It um, It's different in Scientology. There is no choice. And frankly, I don't care what your religion is. If there's not a choice, I'm a little like, eh. <laughs> you should get to choose. You know, I know that you want, people want to bring their children up like them, or maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's the opposite, but there should be a choice is the thing. And children can't make that choice. Children can't consent to Scientology auditing or being in Scientology when it's all they know and what they're being told is the right thing, where they're being desensitized to, to red flags, to alarms that should be going off in their heads about things that are inappropriate, but they don't because we're indoctrinated to believe in Scientology that we're big beings just in little bodies if we're kids, that children aren't children. So that is definitely a theme. And my kind of takeaway when I read a lot of the comments here too, is there, you know, there's a lot of a call for accountability. And I know in the SPTV community, certain creators too feel there needs to be more accountability with Mike Rinder. And maybe there does, maybe that's a path, right? Maybe that's kind of a path to a bridge in a way. Um, rather than kind of, you know, picking and choosing at the same time, it's, you know, I'm thankful for whatever he shares, but there's this this thing about accountability that there seems to be need to be an answer for that I think would re, re would would bring more healing. If that's maybe maybe a little bit more the right word that could bring more more healing that way. Jeanette, even though folks are upset with Mike, they still direct people there. That's very true. And that again I think is something that it's there are, myself included, I continue to promote the Aftermath Foundation as a source for if people need help leaving Scientology. And I'm going to do the same with Aaron's, probably even more if the board is diverse. Right now, it's all we have. And they have helped people and they do. Do we agree necessarily with these NDAs and all that? No, right? That's kind of a moving target. Hopefully, the more feedback they get, the more change that they will make. I have hopes that that's going to happen. We will just kind of have to see. Uh, J.M.T. Press Poet. What a great name. Natalie, I am a never in retired journalist and I have to say you're a great journalist yourself. Oh, thank you. I definitely do not consider myself to be a journalist. I feel like that's reserved for people who kind of like went to school for it. <laughs> I found you through Aaron, who is also awesome. So glad your voice is out there. Thank you. I've done a lot of like I've written a column, which is different, hosted a radio show, all very different, but I am so thrilled to be here and that you guys keep showing up and be able to share my two cents on things and my experience as well. I appreciate all of you. All right, let's catch up here. Let's catch up here. Oh, so many good points. Freezy new project. Natalie, I agree. If someone has triggers and they want to help others with the same problem, if someone isn't there from outside of that, reactions and re-triggering would be inevitable. Yeah. And, and we see that. And that's where I feel there's a disconnect and where if I could say anything to Mike Rinder, it would be just please take a step back and remember often who you're talking to or people who are victims of Scientology. And let's just try to, you know, give each other grace. And it goes that way too. That's why I, I like to point out that Mike Rinder has done a lot to expose Scientology and he will continue to do that. This doesn't take away from that. That is a fact that can be proven and seen. Does that mean there's not more to be done or some healing to take place for people who are directly affected by him in the C organization? I think that would be amazing. I think both can be done. I don't know. I don't know. I speculate, and I want to stress speculate, that is there a fear of that he'll get in trouble for it if he talks about certain things? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. It could be. I know that's not, you know, I'm not the only one that's speculating that as well. But I think it would really lead to 
more healing, especially within the second generation community, because those are mainly the people who are affected and other people too, who are in the C organization when, when Mike Rinder and others were in there and experienced what happened. Mike Rinder himself was the biggest punching bag for David Miscavige. It's not that he went with, without being abused as well, but you know, doesn't mean then you don't just kind of like maybe have a bit more of a full disclosure about it. I think it would lead to healing. I go back and I think about what Mike Brown did, Mike Brown and Laura FM. There was an issue there. They got on a live and they hashed it out and did they? And Laura just needed, I think, some acknowledgement on both sides of some things that happened that they were both involved in. You're going to run into this in the ex Scientology community. It's not a huge community. There are way more people never in Scientology here supporting than there are ex-Scientologists and frankly, Scientologists for that matter. But the more we can communicate and have these conversations and just try to use as much grace as possible with each other because we are all healing. Everybody is healing in their own way, at their own speed and has their different triggers. And that is okay. That's the beautiful thing about it that many of you never in Scientology have shown us. It is okay. You process it how you need to. If that's therapy, whatever that looks like for you, but we're here to support you through that. And through that process of healing, there's going to be dust up and there's going to be upset with people who were in the room when it happened. And that is where I think the rub is. And when it's communicated in a way that's disrespectful and condescending to these same people, of course, they're going to push back. And of course, it's going to be seen as an OSA tactic, especially when, as Nora laid out some really key, you got to go watch her video, points by Owen Hubbard on what to do in these situations. That got laid out. And it, you watch that and you go like, she kind of makes a point. <laughs> but maybe that can be taken as something to learn by, as a learn, a lesson learned, right? By not just the Aftermath Foundation, but anybody in that position who's coming out of Scientology and was a position of authority. Liz Ferris herself, multiple times, talks about how she was the estate's project force in charge. She basically trained new Sea Org members. She ran Sea Org boot camp and she was cruel and mean to recruits. And she has reached out to many of them and would welcome any of them to have a conversation with her. So she has the opportunity to be able to own what she did and apologize for it. It seems really simple. (laughs) And I think that's so amazing and beautiful. KD7, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that. The author of that article has turned off comments. <laughs> okay, that says a lot. I mean, you know, we all get it's just there comments can be all over the place, but I don't know. Outright of blatant, blatant, blatant hate. I'm like, you got to kind of just let it ride, even if they disagree with you. Not everybody disagrees with me, and I'm totally okay with it. I almost sometimes hope that you don't on everything because. Um, I learned so much from differences. So Bad Thayton has a question. If children were Scientologists in another life, but obviously went to the memory wiping station and don't remember, then how can you say there are adults in children's bodies? Yeah, exactly. Through Scientology auditing, you are able to regain these memories is what they, is what they claim. The ethical tailor, there is supporting and there is putting someone on a pedestal. There is no one right way. The protests, criminal charges, going through court and SBTV are all doing excellent work. Thank you. And that is an excellent point. There is a difference. And, you know, I read the original article that we're talking about, the ones that the comments got shut off on. And some of it I was like, okay, I can see that. But a lot of it I was like, wow, you're really, you're, this was my takeaway and my opinion was that it really came across as invalidating all of you who follow these different channels and lend your two cents and are involved in bringing down Scientology. You're intelligent people. You can make your own decisions. And uh, I felt it was kind of like the opposite of that because people can think for themselves. And it's, it's, it's ironic when you think about how so many of you never in Scientology help so many of us who are going through healing from Scientology and the C organization, right? That viewpoint that you have outside of Scientology is so valuable because for us, we take off the glasses and the lens of Scientology, but it's not totally gone. 
you work through. And sometimes it takes a situation coming up, a problem, a situation in life for you to go, oh, okay, I'm not going to grab that Scientology tool. I'm going to use this one that I just learned. Being open to therapy and other forms of self-help. However you get that. Only then do we learn, I think, those things. Let's see here. <laughs> GM Flower, thank you. Nope, Natalie is definitely a journalist. <laughs> Maybe, I guess I got to look and see what qualifies you to be one. I feel that because I share so much of my opinion and my speculation and thought that it moves away from true journalism, which should be unbiased. You know, I have my own bias on things and I try to be clear about that and say, hey, this is this is what I'm thinking about this. All right, let's see here. Thank you, those who are saying you sent me emails. I will look that up. And yes, L. Ron Harper's birthday is tomorrow. I would really appreciate you all checking your subscribe buttons because we're going to blow through 20,000. We wanted to get there by March 13th, but we're definitely going to get there in the month of March. And here's the beauty of it. You know what? If we don't make it by tomorrow, so what? <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're not Scientology. <laughs> no one's going to have to clean the bathroom. No one's going to be assigned conditions. No one's going to be deprived of sleep. We are still going to celebrate because with the help of all of you, we're, we've, we've done some really awesome things on this channel. And honestly, it's because you guys keep showing up and you guys he, even help me put this together by sending links and all of those things. It has everything to do with you guys. I feel like this is our channel. This is our channel because you guys help me so much. Abu's asking, do you think the majority or a minority of Scientologists actively ignore but also know stuff is wrong? What goes what goes on out of fear they'll lose their family if they speak up? 100%. On my best day in Scientology, I could have given you at least three things that I had disagreements about, things that I were seeing. That's why asking them questions like, you know, how free are you really? How much debt are you in? Yell that one to a few Scientologists. And you might just wake some people up. That is a big button that Scientologists have is the demands on the money. Eisen, invalidating others, how render of her, how render of her. <laughs> He's also the one who didn't see the never ends as a group that is as important. I would agree. And I think that was a big mistake because Without people never in Scientology, we would not have gotten this far. Ex-Scientologists have been screaming from the rooftop for decades about these abuses, and they continued. Scientology would kind of stop, and then they would ramp back up again. And we're here sharing our stories and sharing about the abuses and bringing the receipts. And it's being amplified because of people never in Scientology. Every ex-Scientologist can go to their elected leaders and say, hey, where do you stand on questioning Scientology's tax-exempt status? And nothing will be done. But enough people never in Scientology in every single community going to their elected leaders and asking the same thing with us, then something will be done. It's numbers. It's numbers. Politicians want to be elected. They take up the causes that their constituents. It's squeaky wheel. There's enough of you now and more and more of you that we need to have that squeaky wheel. We need to be the squeaky wheel and we couldn't do it before. And now we can do it with you guys. Irrelevant Panda, I went to school for journalism. No, journalism is unbiased. You absolutely are a journalist. Oh, thank you. I didn't know that. I just had in my head that it was, you know, you had to go to school for it or you just could not be biased about something. Cool. I'll take it. Welcome to Scientology Life After a Cult. I'm a journalist. <laughs> it's official now. Yes, Treasure Rescue. Volcano birthday cupcakes for everyone for L1 Hubbard's birthday tomorrow. <laughs> USB, if I have to clean my bathroom anyway, can I still do it? Yes, you can. Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Um, Literally, Cherry Bakewell, CSA and elder abuse is uncomfortable. That is why it stays in the dark. 100% agree. We need as much sunshine on these topics to alleviate the stigma and shame. Power to the people, no justice, no peace. Yeah, you're right. It is uncomfortable, a lot of it. In fact, what I'm going to be sharing later today is really uncomfortable. But uh, I've talked about it a little bit before, but I think we need to talk about it some more. 
Rihanna is not hitting the 20K, this is 20,000 subscribers by March 13th, actually the best part of the birthday game, 16,500 of quality, not just quantity of randos on a mailing list. <laughs> yes, no, we're doing great. Don't get me wrong. The channel is, is growing amazingly. And I'm so incredibly grateful because it is because of all of you. I just show up share the content, but you guys are the ones here liking, subscribing, spreading the word and getting it out. And I appreciate that. And I am thrilled to death with the progress that we've made with the amount of people we've been able to reach. We've already reached over a million views. I think we hit that in February here on the channel and the larger, my big, I have a couple of motivations for growing the channel and growing the subscribers. One it helps me get the interviews I want to get. When you're a larger channel, you can there, because trust me, I have reached out to some people and I don't hear back. And the more the channel grows, I start to hear back. So I know that if we keep growing it, I can get, there are certain people I really want to talk to that will pay more attention when, you know, the channel gets larger. Secondly, it helps get the word out. I am here to end Scientology to spread awareness about Scientology and other cults in the process. Because if you understand how Scientology works, you got a good hold on how cults work. And maybe you'll avoid another cult, not just Scientology. That is the sole reason. I'm making changes to my life, even in my business, to be able to focus more on YouTube. Because I think we have a window and an opportunity to really do this. And I want to take an advantage of it and do it while I can. I am not getting any younger people. I am 53 years old and I want to see this happen in my lifetime. And I think that we can do it. That's so funny, Don Holt. SBTV is a live Netflix documentary about Scientology and always a new episode. I agree. There needs to be one so much. Sharon, yes, as a never in, I'm glad that we are helping the ex-Scientologist getting the word out. Not just that, but your viewpoint. Like, I mean, it's just gold to me. I say it all the time. It is gold because even when I take off the Scientology glasses, sometimes I'm still like, I don't know, was that weird? Was that abuse? I need to relook at it. And sometimes I need to hear, yeah, that was totally wrong, girl. That was totally wrong and not okay. And it's so helpful. So very helpful. Lil Lil, yeah, see, just check my subscribe button and YouTube did unsubscribe me. I was wondering why I wasn't getting the notifications. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I don't know what is going on the last couple of weeks. I've gotten so many emails about that. We still, our subscribers are growing, but something's going on. It should be growing more because that is happening. Mandy Me, thank you. You're a good journalist and a good journalist discloses when they are stating their opinions. You do that. Thank you. I do try to do that because I want to be clear about what's my opinion and what's fact because you don't have to agree with me in any way on my opinion, but you know, fact is fact. <laughs> Bad Thetan, can I get a sec check on what happened to Natalie's donuts? Yes, I almost want to send what's called an interrogatory, a goldenrod piece of paper with questions on it in there. Who said you could have Natalie's donut? What was said? When was it said? How many of Natalie's donuts did you eat? When? What was said? Who said it? That's how these interrogatory things work. Uh, boo, when you're when when you're in Scientology, if someone mentioned a disagreement to you, would you have kind of shut them up and ignored it without reporting, or would you have tried to get them out? When you're in Scientology, if someone mentioned it, well, if you're in Scientology, you're not trying to get somebody out. But if you mean on the outside, if somebody shares a disagreement, yeah, I would totally share with them more and say, hey, here here's the deal. Here's what I know to be true. Here's where you can find some factual information. George, yep, she sure is. She sure is. CB's asking if anyone's going to the St. Paul org tomorrow. So uh, I have the day off, probably we'll check it out. Anybody in the St. Paul, Twin Cities area, CB, you can also email me, Natalie at Life After a Cult. Um, CB, you probably, I think you maybe did email me, but if you could, again, with your contact info that you're willing to share that way, if anybody reaches out to me, I can go ahead and share that with you. Marissa, your daily updates means Aaron doesn't have to do 15 videos a day. So much Scientology news. Thanks, Natalie. <laughs> 
I love too how Aaron can focus more on like he can do a 20, 25 minute video on a specific thing and go and do more of a deep dive. I want to do that more too because we touch on things, but ah, there's so many things I just want to talk about. I just want to talk about it. Thank you, Martha, for that reminder. <laughs> and to check your subscribe button. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to wrap up. You guys have such amazing comments. I'm going to finish reading these all in here as well. And uh, remember today, probably around noon central time, I'm going to come on and we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into how I left the C organization, what happened, where I was kept, and uh, a lot of nastiness that went on around that. So, the, but the good news is that uh, I did, I at least got out of the C organization, but then had more to do to get outside of Scientology. Hey, Carrie Ann, good to see you there. Girl, people are coming after your records of getting the blind shut in Portland, Canada, all over. So you got to set a new record, <laughs> but it's good to see you here. Boo, thank you for becoming a member. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> thank you so much. And yes, Tara, everybody hit that thumbs up button on the way out. Check your subscribe button and uh, come join me again later today. In the meantime, everybody get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day.